Hi, this is Stan Bush. Hi, this is Stephanie Calvert. This is John Payne. This is Jack Hughes. Hey everyone, this is Britt Lightning from Vixen. Hi, I'm Carrie Stevens. Hello, I'm Kofi Baker. are really starting to struggle, especially as now we're in the 80s and MTV is here. And the popular new genres are like new wave. Uh, <laughs> not necessarily very friendly to Southern rock. So there were real questions about how viable this band could be in the 80s. They would release this album, The Deed Is Done, in November 1984. And this is one of my absolute favorite Molly Hatchet albums. Although it's not Frazetta, this cover is absolutely badass. One of my favorites of theirs. And there was a lot of pressure from their label to go in a more commercial direction. I think Epic was looking at the success that ZZ Top was enjoying with their Eliminator album and saw that as a potential formula for Molly Hatchet to follow. I like the idea of using, you know, contemporary 80s production with their southern rock bass. I think there was potential to make great music, and I think the end result is that. A song called Satisfied Man is the lead-off single. This was the last song of theirs to ever land on the Billboard Hot 100. It topped out at number 81, and I will play a clip of that. So this song cracks me up. The lyrics are all about how he doesn't do drugs or womanize because he has such a great girlfriend or wife back at home. That's all he needs is this one girl. Uh, he's a satisfied man, so he doesn't need to go out and party because he's got her at home. <laughs> Which, um, just knowing the drug and alcohol habits of all of the guys in this band uh, make the lyrics all that more funny. And this music video is amazing. It is one of the greatest lost music videos of the 80s. It features the band playing in some, you know, dirty bar room, and they see some biker dude creeping on the women who are in the audience, and Danny Joe, in defense of these women, jumps off the stage to fight this creepy biker dude. And they're like squaring off around the table. And suddenly, the doors for the place blow off, and a armored knight, like this very knight from the cover, bursts in. And then it turns out that this knight is also a biker, so Danny Joe escapes by jumping on the motorcycle with the knight. Riding bitch, by the way. And they escape into the night. And then it's revealed at the very end of the video, the last shots of the video, is the knight taking off its helmet, and it's revealed that the knight is actually a hot chick. <laughs> and her and Danny are riding off on the motorcycle into the night. Absolutely hysterical. <laughs> I love this video. This is why I love early MTV, because these just funny concepts. So, yeah, if you haven't seen that, definitely go check it out. And yes, the lyrics of the song are very silly, but I don't know, the music here is really good. Like, I, I think they implemented the synthesizers and 80s production techniques very well, you know? And I think they did that throughout the rest of the album. There's another track on here called She Does, She Does that has a saxophone. And, yeah, you know, old school Molly Hatchet fans might be suspicious of that. I think it works really well. Another track here called Stone in Your Heart is one that I liked. So to wrap this up, here is a clip of Xavier talking about um, his interview with Dave Hubeck for Kerrang! Magazine because it was during the promotional cycle for this album that Xavier met the band and got to interview them for what would become the cover story 
of his article in Kerrang. Once he saw that I was an actual fan, and I think he must have read some of my stuff. I mean, yeah. maybe he hadn't, but it looked like he had. And I started questioning. He said, oh, well, here's someone who knows what they're talking about. And then when I asked him if he had any whiskey, that's when he passed me the that's when he passed me the Crown Royal, which I just held on to. And in fact, I got another picture of me and Dot Holiday. Actually, I am holding Jack Daniels in that one. <laughs> and um, he was a bit cagey at first, but then once I started asking more, he, it seemed like he was quite happy to talk about it. And then the fact I, we started talking about songs and how how the record company were trying to change them and and bringing Danny Joe Brown back was, you know, he was obviously ready to come back. Maybe he got over what he was going through. I thought, well, let's give it another shot with our original singer. I'd say that Hubeck was very easygoing. And when I was, he seemed quite relaxed because I think he, I think the band were in quite a good place. You know, they'd got this new record out, got on a Billy Squire tour, and they, I actually think they went down better than Billy Squire, personally. Yeah, I believe that. Real quick, here is the Kerrang! Uh, magazine that Xavier's article is printed in. Molly Hatchet gets the front cover, and you can you know, kind of see these Viking warriors, this original piece of art here. And, uh, yeah, that sure is a Confederate flag up top. So it's definitely part of their imagery and brand. And, yeah, that, you know, of course hasn't aged well. But if you take it in the context of the times, I, I do like the magazine cover. And if you like Molly Hatchet, you should track down um, this interview because it's really interesting. It comes at an interesting point in the band's history, sort of their last gasp at, like, real chart success. So, yeah, once again, really glad that Xavier was able to come on and tell me about it. <laughs>